when Jesus Christ wanted to spread his philosophy, how many disciples he had? 12 or 13? 12. And you can see with 12 disciples, he could transform quarter of the world with his philosophy, which came down to the religion of Christianity. Look at the strength of that philosophy thousands of years back, which allowed people to love and create charity, spread education. And we are here today in this wonderful week of Christmas in a wonderful college, Malabar Christian College in Calicut. You can see a philosophy which is 2,000 years old. One man made a difference. He had only 12 disciples. In last century, 1900, in India, we had Mahatma Gandhi, whose Dandi March was yesterday re-enacted 80 years later to protect the marine and marine diversity in southern part of India, southwestern part of India. Again, one man, he told the world that without bloodshed, without gun, with a single stick, he said you can remove a mighty British emperor from this land of India. Again, one person's philosophical power, extraordinary. And all of you here today to be proud Indian, born in free India, people like us, like Zalil, and you are born not in free India, you are born in free super India, right? So first, these two people made a difference. So therefore, if you want to convert the entire world, very large percentage of people, you need 12 disciples. When I thought of open source drug discovery, actually Gandhi didn't have 12 disciples, he had fewer disciples. But he did a very interesting thing. When he saw that not too many people are becoming his disciple, what he did, he did a very simple approach. He got rid of his shirt, got rid of his dress, just wore a small dhoti and a stick, associated himself with the people of India. So then millions of Indians became his disciple. And they gave India the freedom without a bloodshed. If you look at Nelson Mandela, he liberated South Africa from the control of white to black dominated. But he made sure that there is a friendship and there is no disturbance. And that he made sure by himself, using the same Gandhi's approach, Gandhi, as I said, got rid of his shirt, coat. He was a Bharat law. He was an English trained person. He did the reverse. He wore a jersey, which is played of the players of football, American football, you know. And that rugby, and he played rugby, to, which was a white man's game to bring people together. So you can see there is a symbolism associated with a new idea. A new idea don't get happens overnight. It takes years, but it has a tremendous power if the idea is new and if there are disciples. So when I sat and looked at listening to Abdul Kalam in 1995, I realized that he has coordinated 200 industry 
64 organizations brought them together to create the entire rocket program of space, eventually DRDO and Saturn. I haven't seen Bikram Saravai, I haven't seen Obi Bhava, so I can't tell how those ideas were propagated and approached, nor I have seen Shanti Sharu Bhatnagar, who actually established CSIR in 1940s. They must have been great visionary and extraordinary people who brought new ideas to a country which was very poor. Why I'm saying this? To tell that eventually a new idea, when Gautam Buddha gave his philosophy, it was not accepted in India. It got accepted in the other, Southeast Asia and East Asia. Again, his disciples went and propagated. And he never saw during his time. Imagine today if Gandhi was alive, how happy he would have been looking at open source drug discovery. Right? This is... The reason is... How do I go to the next slide? Will you put it to mine? Oh, wonderful. Because this is the philosophy with which open source drug discovery works. Access to affordable health care is a right for all. It, we cannot do business on health care.